When the crowd saw that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they themselves got into boats and came to Capernaum looking for Jesus. And when they found him across the sea, they said to him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered them and said, Amen, amen, I say to you, you are looking for me, not because you saw signs, but because you ate the loaves and were filled. Do not work for food that perishes, but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him the Father God has set his seal. So they said to him, What can we do to accomplish the works of God? Jesus answered and said to them, This is the work of God, that you believe in the one he sent. So they said to him, What sign can you do that we may see and believe in you. What can you do? Our ancestors ate manna in the desert, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. So Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, it was not Moses who gave the bread from heaven. My Father gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So they said to him, Sir, give us this bread always. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never hunger, and whoever believes in me will never thirst. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So we're entering into the core of this chapter 6 of John's Gospel. And there are seven signs in the Gospel of John, and he calls them signs. And there are seven times he says, Jesus says in John's Gospel, I am. And today we have, I am the bread of life. And the opening reading from Exodus, with the, man, the story of the manna in the desert, the people say, would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. And the same thing is here, so you have dying in Egypt, and have nice flesh pots, nice meals. If it was Italy, it would be the best pizza, and if it was in Mexico, it would be the best tortillas, or I'm not sure the wonderful things Rosario makes, you know. But thinking of the enjoyment of the nice dishes and food. And they would like to die in Egypt. And Jesus talks about the bread of eternal life, the bread of life. And this is going to develop more as we go into the readings in the coming Sundays. And the word signs is here very clearly. You are not looking for me because you saw signs. They already saw signs. They know about them, Cana, the wedding feast. And they know about the healing of the, the paralyzed man. So there are different signs uh, still coming in John's Gospel. And here with the blind man, for example. And here we have this sign of the bread, the miracle of the loaves and fish that we had last Sunday. And Jesus said, you are not coming to me because of the sign. You're coming for the bread. The flesh pots in Egypt, the bread, 
the enjoyments of our times. There's a famous um, statement of the Queen of France when she said, uh, let them have cake. Right? And the Romans gave bread and circuses so the people could be happy. Fill them with stuff that stuffs them up now. Fill them up just now. And nobody can get enough stuff to keep. Sometimes there's a panic because of a security situation. You remember when COVID broke out, they were looking for certain hygienic elements and there was a rush on the supermarkets and there was none available because everybody bought it all and hoarded it in their house. And then we have the lesson of the Exodus showing us one day at a time. And life is actually more than consumption. So if we, cons if we bring all the stuff we can consume, it's going to go bad. How long can you keep food, even clothes? And so we're entering into a whole area here of seeing that all these material things are actually points of contact. When you have a nice meal, it's the company. You're at your grandma's house. It's special occasion. Like there's a nice meal at a wedding. Afterwards, who talks about the meal? Maybe some people, but the wedding was the big deal. A birthday party. The birthday party was the big deal, the celebration of the people. Okay, there was some nice food. So it's the family life around the table. It's not just the food. The food is essential because we need it. We need it to live. But what do we see behind the food, behind the miracles, behind the physicals? And they would wish to lose their freedom and go back to Egypt in order to have more comfort, more enjoyment, more ease. And this is very interesting reality of the human heart. But deep down, everything here is going away, disappearing. And what do we see in all the gifts we have? Just a pleasure? or a gift. Like we have this beautiful art, and we cannot forget the artist. We often forget the people who built our home, the, all the workers who are here. I still remember workers here actually praying, Muslim workers. They were at breaking their work times to pray. I remember this down the encounter chapel. It was the first time I saw people praying here. To remember people when you're going up a stairwell or an elevator, who built it, who designed it, all of the things bring us into a communion with others. And when Jesus gave them the loaves and the fish and fed so many thousands, it was to have a relationship with them. But they came just for the food. They're looking for bread. Like the time of Lazarus' resurrection, another sign. Jesus says, you come, and the gospel says, of John says, they were coming to see Lazarus, not Jesus. And after Jesus rose Lazarus from the dead, they should be coming to see Jesus. But then they want to eliminate him. So it's very interesting how we human beings relate. The challenge for us to live by faith, by trust, by relationship. That we, to build relationships, to give relationships. And that's why when we come to have our relationship with God, we should reconcile first. And we have that step at the Mass to ask for forgiveness to really reconcile. And then, because of these relationships, they're coming out of Egypt to worship God, to be free. And if we look at the second reading of Ephesians today, we're coming out of the old person, all the stuff that Mary Bang is leaving behind, to live in the new reality, to discover Jesus. And that's our big challenge then, how do we get to know Jesus? to have communion with him. And he tells us, whatever you do to the least of these, you do to me. So we have communion with him there. Obviously, we have communion with Jesus reading the scriptures, praying, spending time with him in adoration, and especially in the Eucharist, and especially for all eternity, because he is the way to the Father. Discovering the meaning of life, the to see beyond the physical, beyond our taste buds, to taste beyond our taste buds, to hear beyond the sounds, to see beyond the colors, 
to see the gift that we receive. Our heart is restless until we rest in God. Thank you for joining us today. If you want to learn more about Magdala, follow us on YouTube and on Facebook.